Hey all, John aka Whiskey and Sound and I'm back with another episode of Boilermaker Mondays. Yes, I know I have been a little bit absent as of recent and my apologies for that. Um, yes, Parenthood has definitely been fun and games as of recent. So, and um, between work obviously with the silly season at present, there is literally bugger all time for me to get around to doing reviews. So where I can sneak one in, I will between now and the new year. Hopefully going into Christmas will be a bit you know, easier on me and I can start... Um, well, hopefully after Christmas, I should say, it'll start being a bit easier for me uh, to start doing a few more reviews. But, um, yeah, I'll sneak them in between here and there, wherever I can. So, now, on that note, I'm going to be pulling out something that I've been very, very fortunate enough to get my hands on. And I, um, I have gotten into this bottle a little bit already, but it was time that I actually done a review with it. If you're fortunate enough to get your hands on one of these, this is the Lagavulin 11 year old Off Moon Edition. Uh, and this was the one that was finished off in Guinness casks for four months. So, and released at 46% as well. So, um, yes, it's been enjoyed obviously by the father and myself uh, for his birthday. If anyone saw my, uh, my uh, Facebook posts, I think before that account got closed, who knows. I can't even keep up on the socials anymore. <laughs> but anyway, so now what Boilermaker better to do than to pair it back with the original beer that was used on the cask for the finishing program on this particular log of Wollum. So what I'm going to do is pour out a guess and uh, I'll let that settle as well. Woohoo! I kept forgetting about you. Actually, no, not really. I'll just be slack. So, let that settle out. I can sit here and watch Guinness being poured and just settling days on end. It fascinates me. And it fascinates my daughter too. She just sits there and looks at it. Uh, and I don't know if she's wanting to just tuck into it herself or whatever. Or she just wants to grab it because it's within reach. So, Lagavulin 11, Offerman edition. Done in Guinness casks. Right, now there is, look, there is this sweetness about it. Now, the one cool thing with the 11-year-olds is I found that it was that real sweet spot between the 8-year-old and the 16-year-old. It was just, um, it was a bit more complex enough in comparison to the 8-year-old, but it had that vibrance in comparison to the 16-year-old. So, and there was enough smoke on there to let you know it was like a volume. But this one is a lot more of the sweeter aroma, so there are... I mean, if you sift through it, like, you'll get those vanilla notes that come through as well. It also lends itself to a bit more of the, uh... <sighs> I mean, it's not... You don't have stout notes on this, that's a thing. Well, I personally don't pick up on them, which is kind of cool as well. I mean, there's, like, this cereal note that you do pick up on as well. Once the peat smoke decides to, you know, kick to the sides... It is very vegetable though, like it's like it does have that brininess about it. Push that to the side, it's almost got like that, um, it's like the chalk malt, the Ovaltine, which I've used that note in the past as well. That's what I'm getting on this. So, right, now I'm starting to get a little bit of some red fruits that come through as well. Yeah. Yeah, like just subtle berries are coming through. It's not a massive berry bomb, but as there's some red red fruits that are coming through. Yeah, yep, some vanilla bean. Actually, you know what more reminds me of? So it's chocolate albertini sprinkled over vanilla ice cream with fruit on the side. That's what you get sitting next to a sitting next to your chimney on a leather chair. I don't know if it's on a Tuesday or a Wednesday night. I'll leave you to be the judge of that one. <laughs> but they're my notes anyway. That's roughly the round bit. It does have this real... Oh, so you go back and there's more of the sweetness. But the more you stick your nose in and you know, try to get some more of those notes out, then it starts getting a bit leathery on, on you. Well, I, I find it gets that with me. Right, so getting past all that sweetness and now that's complete. So that's good. Now we can get into... Doing our whiskey wash, beer rinse, and the other way around. Now, so Guinness Draft Stout. This is 
iconic. I can't remember if I've reviewed it on here before or not. I may have with the red breast. Um, but 4.2%. You can get the stronger ones as well in the bottles. I think they're about the 6% mark. And um, they are very, very solid. If anything, I'll probably almost prefer those to this. But it's just the whole pour in the can and this happens. You've got the nitro ball in there. It's a thing. But one day I need to do a ball maker pair. If it's going to involve Guinness or Kilkenny, I'm going to be doing it at an Irish pub. Have, have to do it. So, to the Scots, to the Irish, and Nick Offman, thank you for getting involved on this one. So, let's go. Um, let's go beer wash first and whiskey rinse. One of those beers I cannot live without. Oh, just lovely chocolate malt and this lovely bitterness about it. Espresso, beautiful. And it's just got that lovely velvety, creamy note to it as well. Just so good. Really good. Oh, I'm going to sink into that one again and do a proper beer washing and whiskey rinse. Ooh. So going that way, that amplifies the peat smoke. Oh yeah. And it's almost like it cuts the sweetness out, which is, yeah, okay, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that at all. Mmm, okay. So it makes it a lot more savoury. So a lot more saltier, briny, smoky. Right, that was very interesting. I was not expecting it to go down that path, that's for sure. Um, yeah, cool. Well, that's a bit of fun. So, on that note, I need my water, which I didn't pack here prior. There we go. Right, so, now we're going to go whiskey wash, beer rinse, and see what happens there. Man, leave this in the glass for a bit. Just, yeah, walk away, come back. Yeah, now all the just lovely sweeter notes are coming through this one now. Mm. Just creamy, creamy smoke, really good, <laughs> really good. It's um. Yeah, it's a fun little piece. Definitely a fun little piece. That's, um, oh, you know what? I'm going to revisit that again. Mm -mm -mm. I was going to try talking with my mouth full. Like, it gets syrupy um, when you just swirl that around. Oh, yeah. See, now we get a lot more chocolate. Go figure. It's just creamy chocolate with a subtle hint of smoke, just ever so slightly on the back end. Um, it's cool. I mean, like, it was always going to be a winner because you've got an Isla whiskey or a peated whiskey with dark beer, which is a stout. Um, could be a porter, but I mean, in this instance, we've used a Guinness stout to go back with the Lager Bull and uh, uh, Spirit here. And 9 out of 10, it's going to be a winner. I won't say always, uh, but yeah, generally peated whiskies from Isla in particular lend themselves to darker beers and they just go hand in hand. And more so with this one here, this one went a bit of a surprise. So on the beer wash whiskey rinse, it went savoury, but it turned into a cut as well. And, um, but yet it went complimentary with uh, beer wash, whiskey rinse, or was it the other way around? No, whiskey wash, beer rinse, that's where it turned more complimentary. But um, yeah, beer wash, whiskey rinse, that was the one where yeah, it was more savory and yeah, it acted more like a cut. Um, so yeah, that works. It's, it's a fun baller maker. So 
if you're lucky enough to get your hands on on one of these or you know um, if you're able to try one do it grab a Guinness can or take it to the pub and just pour one into a little cheeky glass and have your ball make pairing there so definitely worth it uh, but I mean look there are also other beers that would work really well with that uh, like a volume too so um, probably leaning towards the uh, like the darker beers but maybe like um, maybe a nice like a like a decent strength uh, brown ale might work really well actually it will work very well with that um, even leaning into your red ales too so but yeah like Keep it dark and it keeps it good with like a and that's for sure, especially if you go on the Offerman. Um, and if you're lucky enough to get your hands on one of the earlier Offermans, then more so. Um, I mean, you could do that with the Stout, you could do it with other darker beers though as well. So on that note, I'm going to leave you all to it and I will endeavour to do my best to get another review done for the following week. So on that note, I hope to catch us all next week. And for those that have been tuning in, um, I really do appreciate the support as well. It means the world to me, so I do get the odd comment that still comes through here and there. So thank you so much for that. And there were a couple of reviews that did come through. I haven't forgotten about you. I will get that done. So just bear with me. That's all I'm going to say. Just bear with me and I'll make it happen. All right. Have a good rest of the week. And on that note, I'll catch you then.